Hey guys, if you've been following the uh, news lately, you will have probably seen that Ultimaker has been touting their the uh, awesome lock. And I thought I'd put together a little video for you guys about my personal experiences with it and if I think it's really worth all the hype that's been given. So let's stick around and find out. Okay, so in a nutshell, the Olsen block takes your LT Maker and it makes the hot end from a one piece unit into a two piece unit that uses replaceable nozzles. Now, in a nutshell, here's my take on if you need it or not. If you just plan on printing PLA or ABS or PET or things that have zero, I mean zero abrasive fillers, you're fine with the stock unit. And there's the end of the show and we're done. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Make It With Calvin. No, the show is not going to be that short, guys, don't worry. That said though, if you do plan on printing anything like carbon fiber PLA, um, glass fill PLA, lay brick, iron, aluminum, I mean there's a ton of different filaments out there with a bunch of abrasive fillers. If you plan on doing any of those, I highly recommend the Olsen block because of the fact that you can switch in and out the nozzles. And also if you plan on doing a ton of really big parts, the ability to switch out nozzle sizes is a huge advantage. I mean, there's, there's an upper speed limit as to how fast you can melt plastic, but you can still go ridiculously fast compared to a .4 nozzle with a .8 nozzle even on, a, on an Ultimaker 2. I've done it before and it's, it's just nuts. I mean, I don't do it very often, but it also comes in handy if you're doing something like a flexible filament as there's less pressure in the system and just it, it likes it better in general. Now, there are a couple of things that you should keep in mind when you purchase the Olsen block. One of them is um, you're pretty much limited to not running the stock fan shroud anymore. I'm personally a fan of it just because of the fact that it is so rugged. Although you could probably find a way to make it work, it just doesn't work very well. So, that means is you're stuck using a 3D printed one, which it's it's not horrible. I mean, don't get me wrong guys, they work. The only problem is over time, they will break down from the heat. This one's um, coffee, PLA, the high temperature stuff from Protopasta, and this one's um, eSun ABS. They, they work. I mean, all things considered, I haven't had a catastrophic failure in print. I've had it happen due to screws coming loose on my end, but that was that wasn't the actual fan shroud just melting into a pile of goop on its own. One thing you can do that helps is to apply a little bit of uh, capped on tape inside here. And that makes um, a lot of difference from what I've heard. I just got my hands on some thanks to a friend. So I'm gonna give that a try on mine. Um, another thing to keep in mind is this block is bigger and it takes a lot, about mm, twice as long to heat up versus the stock block. So it doesn't have that insanely fast, zero to 200 in like 30 seconds. It can't do that. Um, it takes about a minute or two to get up to printing temp, which it, it's not a horrible thing, but do keep in mind because of the fact that the um, nozzle block is a lot bigger, you have to be a lot more cautious about when your fans kick on because if they blew too much air onto the nozzle and the heater block assembly, you will throw a temperature error and it is kind of a pain in the butt. But that's simple, just don't kick the fans on 100% at layer one and why would you be doing that anyways? I mean, that's really the only issues with it. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So, I mean, what can I say? I've run mine for about six months now, and minus a few teething problems initially due to a bad uh, temperature sensor, it's been nothing but amazing running it. So if you guys are looking for a way to upgrade your printer and make it a lot more reliable and also give it the ability to change out nozzles, totally get the Olsen block. It's, it'll be money well spent. Um, with that being said, let's jump on over to the printer and I'll show you guys my method for changing out the nozzles now. This is 
what works for me, so everybody else might do it differently, but I've had no problems with it, so let's go and do it. Okay, so when we go to change out our nozzles, the first thing that we're going to want to do is heat up the nozzle block so that way we can remove it. Oh, and if you have filament in there, it might be a good idea to pull that out as well. Okay, now that we have the nozzle evacuated of filament, we can carefully remove it. I'm just using a little RC car wrench um, here. Just be careful because this thing gets very hot very quickly and this nozzle is at about 250 degrees C because I was last printing a PET with this. Okay, now that we have the nozzle out, um, you're going to want to let it cool down for a couple of minutes because this thing is going to be really, really hot. Um, I find it helps to keep the nozzle warm so that when you, if there's any plastic that's in there on the threads, it won't get in the way. Okay. We could just go ahead and toss our nozzle back in there, but to be honest, I like to use a little bit of high temperature anti-seize thread lubricant. Um, this is probably not necessary, but I find it helps a lot as it forms a barrier between the threads and the plastic that can burn in there and cause problems. Do note that when you use this stuff, it will smell the first time that you heat the nozzle up, so do it in a well-ventilated area or open a window. And the stuff makes an absolute mess, so be very careful when you apply it. I just like to take and dab it lightly in a couple of spots around the nozzle. And don't worry if it kind of globs up in one spot, as it will kind of work itself around. And when you put the nozzle in there, you don't want to go cranking it down like a gorilla, but you definitely want to snug it in there. I like to let it sit for a minute while it's hot, and then come along again and just double check that it's tight, just in case there's any goop on the nozzle, and you're good to go. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Make It With Calvin. If you did, please feel free to leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, like, and share this video with your friends. If you want to keep track of what I'm doing between episodes, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I have links in the description down below. So until next time, have fun and stay safe.